Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Touching Lives by ET Health World. Today we have with us Dr. Ramakant Panda, the chairman of the Asian Heart Institute Mumbai. With a career spanning four decades, he has left an indelible mark in the world of heart surgery and beyond. In this latest episode, watch Dr. Panda share his enduring enthusiasm for heart surgery and how heart care has evolved over the years. With an incredible success rate of 99.4% in heart surgeries and a success rate of 99.83% in bypass procedures, Dr. Panda's surgical skills are absolutely outstanding, garnering him the title of the safest heart surgeon in the world. In 2010, he received the Padma Bhushan, India's third highest civilian honor in recognition of his commitment to excellence. Dr. Panda has performed over 28,000 cardiac surgeries throughout the course of his career and he holds the world record for performing a 12 graft procedure in a man with 17 blocks in 2014. Beyond his surgical accomplishments, Dr. Panda has a strong commitment to philanthropy, promoting the education of girls and the preservation of wildlife. His work as a well-known wildlife photographer further demonstrates his love for nature. Dr. Panda's path has been marked by an unmatched commitment to excellence and compassion. His life's work has had a profound impact on not only his patients' lives but also the disciplines of health, education and wildlife preservation. To set the context for this conversation, let us begin with World Heart Day. Your views on the relevance of World Heart Day. In the beginning, I'd like to thank you for you know, inviting me into this great show. I really appreciate that. Thank you so and much. Thank you for uh, your kind words. And if you see, in the last three, four decades, heart disease was almost a non-entity in this country in terms of uh, risk to the people. From that point, to, almost more than 35 percent of the people who die or suffer diseases in the country are heart-related. And uh, from that angle, it is very, very important for people to know the good thing about heart disease is mostly preventable. A person can take a really proper precautions, various things that I'll go and discuss about it. The chances of the person having heart disease is less. Even those people who have the heart disease, always I say, it is not the end of life for you; it's the beginning of a new life. Because you change your lifestyle, change everything, you can lead a completely normal life. So that is why the World Heart Day importance is very, very important. And this year theme is use heart to uh, treat heart disease or for heart disease is very, very important. Use heart means you need to put your full effort to lead a very good life so that you don't get heart disease. Thank you so for your insights on that. And taking this conversation ahead, sir, how has cardiac care evolved over the years, and what are your views on that? When I did my medicine, there is no facility in the country. There are only three, four places like only near Chur Kem Hospital, Bellore, and few other places where the cardiac treatment was available. Even for angiogram, people all over the country used to come to other Delhi, uh, Mumbai, or Bellore. And those days, the mortality rate was more than 50 percent because it was just evolving. It's not that surgeons were bad; the surgeons were excellent, but the the it was evolving as a as a new form of treatment, and people are not trained, and the availability was very poor. From that to current, where most of the good centers in this country as well as in the world today they can do safely heart surgery, most complex heart surgery with less than one percent risk. And the new form of treatment that is coming out, where you can do heart surgery with minimal invasive surgery or without any surgery, those it has taken a tremendous uh, sea change in last 40 years. So you are credited credited to have performed more than 5,000 extremely high risk surgeries. When you approach these surgeries, how do you approach them? Very early in my life, I learned from my teachers that. Um, For any heart surgery I do, I all the twenty-eight thousand plus patients I've operated. Every time I operate a patient, I think that I'm doing for the first time in life. When you approach any patient that you are doing first time in life, then you really try to take all kinds of precautions because you don't want your first patient to fail. So that's how every single patient that I take, whether high risk or low risk, I treat 
as if I'm doing the first surgery of this kind in my life. That's something I learned uh, many, many years back. And one of the reasons why I take, I do the most high risk patients is if you don't operate, the poor patient has 100% chance of dying. And if you operate at least, even this 2% chance, at least two out of 100 do um, save. If at time I can give one example, which really changed my perspective, why all my life I've looked at only high risk patients. During my training in all I should I, we had a patient uh, who was uh, very, very sick. He was just dying. He was bloated up. And one of my uh, professor, he went on the round. He said, we'll operate tomorrow. So nobody was operating. I said, sir, he's going to die. Why are you operating? I said, he looked at me. He said, if I operate, there's at least 1% chance. If I don't operate, 100%. At least 1% is better than zero. So he operated. Next 24 hours, he passed around 24 liters of urine. Of course, he was in the ICU for a very long time, he recovered. That's not the end of the story. Around a year later, I was in the OPD. I mean, you know, all in the OPD is very, very busy. So that just almost like crowded. So one, I suddenly I look up, a tall Sardar comes, he says, Sir, I want to go to the hospital. I said, No, you are standing there. When you have a number, I will see you. I said, Sir, I don't know. I said, No, I said, Sir, I am Kartar Singh. His name was Kartar Singh. Sir, I am Kartar Singh. So then I said, OK, come. So I saw him out of turn. I said, what do you do He said, Ki, nowadays I'm driving a truck from Chandigarh to Kolkata. This is the person who was dying just a year back. So that day I decided that I'll never refuse a patient. Okay. So you are one of the pioneers in positioning India on the world map as one of the safest countries for heart surgery. And you're the first surgeon in India to introduce the concept of total atrial revascularization. How does India compare to the developed nations in terms of cardiac care? We are among the best. And if compared to developed nations, definitely we are among the best. Of course, it has uh, happened over the last uh, 30, 40 years. It's not me. There are many, many, many cardiologists, cardiac surgeons who have been trained outside, trained within the country that dedicated their entire life to developing these facilities in the country. Today, we are definitely among the developed nations, the best. I can say undoubtedly the best. And some of our surgeons, some of our uh, cardiologists and hospitals can compare with the best in the world. Forget about develop, developing nation, among the developed nation. Cardiac care in India today can start up to match, and certain areas of cardiac care were better than uh, most of the places on earth. For example, I'll give you an example, bypass surgery. Indian surgeons, um, quality of Indian surgeon in bypass is better than most of the surgeons in US, I'll give you. The reason is our Indian surgeons, because of our body size, our size is small, so our arteries are small. So American and other surgeons, they operate on a 90 kilo, 100 kilo person, arteries are much bigger. So they are very used to doing on a bigger artery, but when you try to do a smaller artery, it's very, very difficult for them. So in those areas, Indian surgeons are better than anybody in the world. So, and uh, you've mentioned that we are one of the, of the best in the world, or probably the best in the world, but there are still some challenges. So what are yes, some sir. of the current persistent challenges in cardiac care? These uh, challenges are, uh, number one is the, um, still, if you look at it, the population versus the number of hospital, doctors and centers doing the number of treatment, still we have not reached even 20% of the population. So there is a serious issue of accessibility as well as affordability. Because unfortunately, cardiac care is very, very expensive because 70 to 80% of the treatment at the cost of the cardiac care is material. Those things still are imported from outside the country and the cost is terribly high. So most of the people can't afford. So this is the two reasons, biggest challenge is accessibility, affordability. Third major challenge is people's uh, uh, understanding of heart disease because our uh, the lifestyle has completely changed compared to last 40, 45 years when I was a student versus now the lifestyle is completely changed from a simple diet that Indians are used to eat which is very heart healthy. Today we are eating complete uh, heart unhealthy diet and lifestyle in terms of exercise etc. We are not doing at all. So and uh, if you you mentioned that earlier the, the diet that we used to follow was very heart healthy. So what changed? Is it uh, the f uh, food industry exploding and serving processed foods and we like, getting addicted to it and consuming it more? Yes. Um, that, 
I always say that four critical things that causes heart disease. Number one is lack of exercise. If you look at it, today's living cities like Mumbai or Delhi, kids don't have any access. And also with the modern lifestyle with your mobile, your TV, etc., they don't have any time to do exercise. Number two is your stress of modern life. Number three, the food approach is very, very important. If you see 30 years back, we used to eat which was available naturally because those things are very good for the health for the body. The reason is anything that processed food, it is gets absorbed very quickly in the body. And when, when it gets absorbed, your sugar level goes up very high very quickly and the body has to secrete insulin to do that. And that point of time, you don't need sugar. What it does, it converts that sugar to fat. Also, all the processed food also very high in sodium, salt, high in saturated fat. All these are extremely bad for the body. When you combine all these lack of exercise, bad food habit, that's a perfect. And third, very important thing also is now we have realized lack of sleep. It's very important sleep. for body to get rest for the repair activities. So you need to sleep at least eight or seven to eight hours a day. Also sleep early, not two, three, four o'clock in the morning. So all these things has led to the epidemic form of heart disease in the country. So it's very important to reverse it, to lead a good life. That means everybody must do some, some form of physical activity, exercise. If you can't just avoid taking a car, just walk one kilometer, take up, you know, climb a flight of stairs. Any kind of physical activity is better than no physical activity. No activity. Second thing, avoid all the processed food. Go to as much natural food as possible. Get a whole grain, take fruits, vegetables, those things take. In the non-vegetarian fish is good for body. Those things you can take and combine that to sleep. If you do all the three things, the chances of heart problem goes down drastically. Thank you, Zum. So you're one of the most sought after heart surgeons and a celebrity in your own right. What is your inspiration and why did you choose the profession as a heart surgeon? I'll give the first why I choose. Yeah, As a please, child, please. Um, 1968, the first heart transplant was done in the world. It was like similar to man landing on the moon. It was man landing on the moon. It was that kind of coverage happened all over the world. And heart surgeon overnight all became like rock stars. So as a child, I thought this is something <laughs> I want to do in my life. So of course, then I had influence in my family. My uncle was a doctor, so I had to do medicine. When I got into medicine, that, that had still stuck there. I want to do only heart surgery, nothing else in this. Uh, I'll not do anything. To the extent those days, there's only four or five steps centers in the whole country. So all my, uh, one of my uncle who was the dean of medical college, he said, you'll be on the street, you'll have no job. I said, still, I want to do heart surgery, nothing else. The point I'm taking in the context of my advice to people, uh, all the young doctors, is number one, do it from the heart. Don't do it for money. If you try to do money, it is, you are uh, not going to be successful. Do it from the heart where you like it. Be committed day in, day out and try to do the best. And because, and fourth, very important thing, your patients are your best teachers. Don't neglect the patient. You always, you know, whether in terms of learning medicine, in terms of getting more patients, your patients will be the best brand ambassador. Your happy patients is going to send you all the patients, another 400, 500 patients. You don't need to run after money because you take care of patient, give a good results, patients are happy, you are going to get patient. This is my advice. Do whichever specialty you want from the heart. Commit to it your day in, day out to it. Try to do the best that you can do and take care of patient. Your patient should go out happy. So, so you wanted to be a rock star in the context of how the first heart transplant was done and that motivated you and you wanted to be a rock star. So I guess you've achieved that. But what inspired you and what kept you ticking? It is, as a child, it was my dream. That's not as a rock star. I thought something, this is something, you know, like, you know, that is, if you see that decade was very exploding, everything. Man was landing on moon, this was happening. So as a child, I got very, you know, influenced to do something in life. So that was more important. But once I got into heart surgery, I loved it. If I was given a chance to relive my life, I'll still do it. Training yours was very, very tough. Heart surgery is a very, very tough branch. We used to work 18, 20 hours a day. Sometimes uh, during training years, work continuously for 35 to 38 hours. Go home, sleep for eight hours, come back and work. 
So that was that tough. The thing that I love this specialty is very few branches of medicine where a patient is dying and you do the treatment for heart, whether it's cardiac surgery or cardiology. The guy goes home alive and many instances the guy is working after two days. That kind of dramatic change to a person's life that you, you make is not in any other branch of medicine. That is what keeps me ticking. That's what keeps me, you know, work for 16, 18, even now also still I work 15, 16 hours a day. It is the joy of somebody dying and saving his life and three days or five days later he's working home. So, uh, if you could also share a message for budding cardiac surgeons and cardiologists for the country, a message from your end. My message will be, uh, don't run after money, don't run after success. You focus, give your best, study hard, learn all aspects of cardiology or cardiac surgery, try, be, try to become the best and your patients are your biggest asset, learn from them. Treat them with utmost respect and treat them with the, the best you can give. Make the patients happy. That is what is going to determine your success. And treat every patient as if you are doing it for the first time. Then you will never make errors. So, and you are uh, currently working on organizing an exhibition as well for your wildlife photography. Right? So your passion for it, if you could add to it. That started, see, I always believe that you work very hard, also you smell the roses because you don't need to work, you know, 24 hours, 365 days, no other life outside of your car, whether it's cardiology, cardiac surgery or medicine. So always, I, you need to have a work-life balance. It is very important for you to, your profession, yes, most important. Next is your family. Your family you should not be neglecting. Third thing, your society. All the three things one needs to do. So that is where this thing came in. So I st wildlife started as a hobby. Now it is the second most passion next to my cardiac care and cardiac surgery. Over time, I realized when I got involved with wildlife, you have seen there's only two countries, two continents in the whole world where the wildlife is left now. One is Africa, India. India has more diverse wildlife than even Africa. So, and I have seen as a child the extent what it was there, what is today. And it's the amount of destruction that has taken place. So that is how uh, I kind of gravitated towards that as a second person now. It's more about wildlife conservation. Good thing is the new generation are very, very, uh, I see a lot of youngsters are very committed about this cause. So that's why I got involved and more I got involved, I saw more than wildlife now, I'm more involved in the little bit conservation side, helping people, workers who are working in the parks, the people who are living around that place because education is the biggest thing that can lift people out of poverty. So that's why I'm a little bit involved in the education, etc., for the tribal people around the parks. So is it even therapeutic? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's, it, I go there from two, three times in a month and it recharges me for the rest of the week. Absolutely. Because again, it's therapeutic. It's something that you love from your heart. You come at 2 o'clock at night, you'll find me as fresh as now. <laughs> so it is very important that anything you do, do it from the heart and you love to, you, you, it must be your passion. You must love it. If, again, my message to some of the budding doctors, if your parents have pushed you or there's a peer pressure you are doing, you want to do something else, please do something that really you love to do. Don't get into that. Your parents or peers have forced you. And second, very important, there's a lot of peer pressure parents that, you know, there's a lot of money in this particular branch, a lot of money in that particular branch, there's no money anywhere. It is only you have to create it. You try to become the best and take care of patients. Money will automatically follow. You don't need to do anything. You have 500 very happy patients, they will send you 5,000 patients. You don't need to go anywhere. This will be my message to the boarding so, young doctors. So, and in conclusion, if you could also share a message for everyone that watches this interview for World Heart Day. So here there could be people that are not even doctors, but they could be watching this interview. So yes. your message for them. My message will be the in a generation, in 30, 40 years time, from no heart disease, we today heart disease capital of the world. It's purely because of lifestyle that leading. 
The good thing about heart disease is unlike many other diseases, once you have it, you cannot reverse it. A large part of the heart disease can be reversed and no amount of medicine is going to cure it. What is most important is your own lifestyle that lead. As I told you, the most important thing is do regular exercise, do yoga, which de-stresses you, eat the right type of diet and sleep at least seven to eight hours daily and sleep early before 10 o'clock. These are the four things you do. Then you lead a very, you will not get heart disease. Even if you get a heart disease, you can lead a normal life. It will not going to reduce your lifespan, neither the quality of life. Thank you, sir. Thank you so it's much for pleasure. your time. And it thank has you been for giving us this time, sir. Thank you so it much. It has been my pleasure. And thank you for having me on the show. Thank you, sir.